A few decades ago, one in 30 people battled with allergies. Today, that figure is one in four. And the incidence is on the increase. Ben, why is that? Well, that's a very good question, and um, our parents would say, you know, we're over, overreacting or we're overdiagnosing this. But environmental factors is definitely playing a part, and we've come up with what we call the hygiene mm -hmm. hypothesis, which basically says that we are too clean, we are sanitizing anything, and our immune system, to put it very bluntly, is looking for something to react to, because all an allergy is, is an overreaction of the immune system. That's right. And in this case, to a harmless substance. Exactly. So what they've noticed is, and it was interesting, in the unification of Germany, where you have a hereditary sort of one uh, nation, genetically, they saw that in East Germany, the incidence of allergy was about 2%, whereas in West Germany, it was 25 to 30%. So what was the difference? And then they came up with this hygiene hypothesis. And then we looked at kids growing up on a farm compared to growing up in the city, growing up with a cat or a dog. So it's not necessarily a bad thing if you find your kid with a grasshopper in the mouth. <laughs> a grasshopper in the mouth. Cockroach, maybe? You know, dirt in the yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Ben, I couldn't agree with you more. That's environmental factors. What about genetic factors when it comes to allergies? Definitely. Um, we call it the ATP, um, and, and we know that if both parents have an allergy, has ATP, then we're sitting with about an 80% chance of your child having also an allergy uh, progression. Okay, you talk about allergy being an overreaction of the immune system. I mean, just describe the kind of process for us, and then let's talk about allergic rhinitis, the most common allergy. Right, allergy in itself is, is the immune system is divided into antibodies, and specifically the antibody that has to deal with, with allergies, antibody E. Um, and we look in, if you look into the system, there is an overproduction of that antibody, so it's looking for work. It's a very non specific way of looking at allergy because if your allergy is confined solely to your nose, your levels might not be that high. Whereas if you've got an eczema, which is really just another way of your body expressing its allergy, um, the allergy level might be very high. So there is a, a definite link between allergic rhinitis, asthma, eczema. It's really one disease and it's inflammation of your system. Okay, now if I have that, born with it, environmental factors, whatever the case is, what can I do with it? It can't be cured so it must be managed or treated. Well, that's a very good point. We cannot cure it. We cannot cure a common cold, but I can control it. And that control affects your quality of life, how you live your day to day. And people with allergies that are not really controlled will tell you that it affects their day to day life. It affects their productivity. It affects the way they deal with other people. Um, and in children specifically, it makes a big problem at school level. Sleep plays a very important role because the child or the adult will sleep very fitfully, will not go into his deep REM sleep phase. So he will wake up in the morning and he'll just be difficult, you know, almost with the wrong foot out of the bed and doesn't want to do anything and he'll go to school and he'll sit and he'll be lethargic and the teacher will say he's not paying attention in class so it's very important to control that allergy and we can do that but you have to understand I cannot cure it I think there are a lot of parents kind of going that is what's wrong with my child <laughs> allergies well it might just be the case and you know it's very easy to treat and if you do have allergies you must treat it you really have no excuse and we'll talk about that tomorrow so make sure you come in and stay tuned Sipla will make it better. Stay with Espresso and SABC3.